MG are your nightmare. against the top teams internationally. It's a huge different stage. There's a lot of teams that will punish you for what like you will get away with in our regions. Cũng vì lẽ đó nên mình càng quyết tâm đem hết nhiệt huyết để thi đấu hết khả năng của mình tại MSI lần này. The real challenge starts now. Yeah, you better. We had the best start ever. Last year, BRTT beat Holy Phoenix. I'm here to do the same. Yeah, you're better. This year, I'm here to come fishing. Yeah, you're better. Đi với em có kinh nghiệm nhưng mà bọn em có sức trẻ. Yeah, but you know, you're so good. Wa kai chime da to, tono aggressive ni, you know, mo ojike zukazu ni yatte kuru te koto wa kekko aru to mon desu kedo. Ma boku tachi wa sugoi so ni lese ni taisho shite yatte ikita na te omotte mas. Yeah, you're better. We're really good at just taking our opponent's strengths and just turning them into weaknesses. Every mistake you guys make, we'll exploit. Yeah, you better. Evil geniuses will live up to our name, and we're out for blood. Welcome back to Weber 2022 in Busan, South Korea. And just a quick call out the graphics, the animation, the video, the style of everything on MSI is the single greatest I have ever seen in League of Legends. I freaking love it all. And our opening match of the day, I freaking love that Beautiful. too. G2 Esports will be taking on Evil Geniuses and getting ready at the Busan Esports Arena for another EU versus NA Clash. I'm Quickshot, joined by Orcs and Raz. Um, Raz, tell me, my friend, are you ready for another exciting loss? Uh, sorry, day of Ooh. matches um, as uh, EGO take OG2? I'm going to ignore what you just said. <laughs> because the double... Side. Be coming. Matches. Hey, don't mm. worry, you have a chance for two losses today. Oh there my go. god, I forgot Orcs. you're also European! <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. He may be a European, formerly European, I should say, actually, but not representing them at the event. Let's take a look at the most surprising outcome of yesterday. I think it's PSG dropping their game to Red Canids. Um, in particular, because PSG, if you look at last year's MSI and, and uh, the dominance they have for the region, they were favorites. But we're not too surprised they lost the game because they are weaker. It's how they lost the game that was surprising, Rez. Yeah, it was surprising simply because a lot of what we recognized PSG and the PCS for being slow play, smart play, was actually what we saw from Red Cannons. Uh, and so we need to see them pick it up a little bit. Uh, that's the one thing that we need to focus on. And also just individual play. Bay in the mid lane had a catastrophically poor performance. And to turn to the other side, I've got to say, I love the composition, the fact that you have these two artillery champions with the Jin and the Zoe, and then you had the dive threats. And you really need the Wukong to be ahead to work in ages, which is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it worked really well. When we were watching, um, uh, setting up for the pregame, we did mention that PSG talent may not be the heavy favorites for second. Mm -hmm. And now seeing how they were defeated by Ray Cannons, and you look at the group standings right now, PSG 0-1 along with the Wildcats, Team Ace, Saigon Buffaloes with losses. I think every other game went to expectation for the results. But Orcs, do you think the manner in which most of those wins was picked up was surprising at all? Because I thought it was quite stompy. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the big one was the T1 series because they came in as heavy favorites in most people's opinion to even get challenged, especially in the bot lane where everyone has said T1's bot lane, best in the world, to get double killed repeatedly, it's not what we expect. Yeah, I remember hearing uh, there is a podcast with, you know, Flowers and Perks and Perks. He was talking about the fact that when T1 is in an even state in game, the most interesting part about them is the fact that they such a smart team that they can find, they can excel in those instances. And that was in a situation their bot lane was failing, Owner and Faker came out incredibly well. And so even with disasters happening on the bottom side of the map, they equalized and got the better of it. I tell you what, I held my breath for a few moments because when Shogun was five and two on Tristana and had Kraken Slayer and Rapid Fire Cannon at like 11 minutes, I was like, this is winnable, this yes. is winnable. <laughs> and then Ono was like, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> um, and I was shut down completely. I do think let's touch on a, a Dead Nation Focus Me as well. Um, we saw an interview, yes, I believe it was with Ashley Kang, where uh, uh, the Orn pick for Ebby in the top lane was accidental. It didn't matter, they still won the game. But DM 
EFM looked pretty good, and you know I'm interested to see how they will develop as well. Yeah, I think similarly we saw a really strong performance from the bot lane in that one. I think a lot of people talked about the fact that we have a new mid and support for them, and I think particularly in the support role, Harp has just been stellar. So great. I to mean, see his Renata yesterday was great, right? Oh, yes. 100. Yes. It makes me kind of frightened to see Renata going on in the rest of the tournament because just seeing how Harp was not only just able to use him later on in the game, where, you know, you expect to see Renata scale, but just in laning phase, bullying straight. I want to see more of that. I mean, those handshakes were fantastic. Literally just waiting for Sumir's W to time down and like literally yoinking yes. back time and time again. Uh, talking about the Sumir, talking about some of the champions, we're still focused on the first day of play. We are on 12.8 and at the top of the show, we looked at all the changes from 12.6 to 12.8. I want to ask for some key takeaways and how things are developing. I want to start with my boy, Gangplank because um, he found himself on the ban list a whole lot and everybody in solo queue is being terrorized by the fella that's going to be on my shoulder in a moment. I also saw a lot of Lucian. I saw Wukong, oh. way more Wukong than I was expecting. Yar, matey. Um, <laughs> Rez, what do you make? Let's go through the list starting with Gangplank and some of the bands. Yeah, uh, it's funny enough. We kind of expected to see more GP in the three patches from a lot of the region's finals to this event. He did get the uh, get a did get a buff, but also just people started exploiting builds. The Bezos build when you're <laughs> getting, <laughs> we started to see a little bit of that. Uh, you know, some. Uh, <laughs> The bank plank, a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, oh. But then, of course, like the Prowler's Claw, uh, also Collector, things like these. No? So we expect to see a little bit more of them because he is just a strong counterpick to like the tanks like the Orin that you mentioned earlier. So that's something that I want to see, but you're right. It's been banned quite frequently. Yeah, and I feel like Lucian as well is something where we've seen a lot of bounds towards it. We've only seen it in the bot lane. It's ultimately a flex pick, though, and I feel like that's why it gives it such a, a wide berth to be able to be played in pretty much any lane. Yeah, I don't want to see Lucian top lane. <laughs> we've seen way too many Lucian top lane domestically. I know in North America that has flopped, but you're right. Uh, if we end up seeing Lucian mid, especially with AP junglers that we've been seeing in the, in the meta currently with Evelyn being the threat from Kevy, but also Karthus, that's been a constant. He's a great mid laner and also such a bully in the bot lane. You got to see what Yugurapan was able to do this with oh. the 2v2 that we mentioned. They're with actually Harp. disgusting, those clips. Yeah, 100%. Just able to completely take over the game. I think something else to mention is the fact that we've seen so much play from Wukong in particular. The jungle pool has completely shaken up. Uh, the fact that Wukong has emerged as this really heavy skirmishing pick is also excellent in the team fights. And also Graves is something that's shown up that's been really interesting because he didn't actually get any buffs between the patches, but Umble Glaive got buffed. We saw 100 gold cheaper uh, and the cooldown got lowered on the active and we've seen him just completely take over some games. Are we going to see more Vi along with the Wukong? Because there was some discussion around that and both of you are smirking. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, I I think Ona made the Vi work. Do I think it's going to come in firmly in the meta? Probably I, not. Such a cheeky grin. <laughs> Raz, what's your take on the Vi then? Look, it might come into favor with teams that just have that one carry looking okay. at evil geniuses and Danny right. that you just want to pick apart. Uh, but it is a fun pick, especially in the first stage when it's not super competitive. Uh, kind of piggybacking off Wukong, we saw Wukong alongside in the Red Cannon games, Leona. It's just such a real yeah. dominant way to start fights if you have vision control. So I expect to see more of that duo. I just want to say Wukong, worst version of Diana, and Vi, worst version of Nocturne. Oh my goodness. Uh, moving on, just for just a sake, every single one of the groups today has got incredibly important stakes. Now, these are the groups, right? So as a reminder, the top two from each will advance to the Rumble stage. And when you take a look at the wins, DFM T1, RNG Red Cannons, and G2, with EG and Order looking for their first wins, let's take a look at the schedule and highlight some of the important Matchups. I'm going to start with two of my favorite regions, Turkey and Brazil. The Wildcats will be taking on the Red Canids, with Red Canids picking up that upset win against BSG yesterday. If they beat the Wildcats, they have a very comfortable 2-0 start and are favored to make it out of the group. Yeah, I think the big one for me is that they should focus me against Saigon Buffalo because for me, when we came into the group stages, I feel like this was the, the fight for second, you know, with T1 likely to take first in the group. So I'm hyped to see them go up against each other, especially when they both had really aggressive early games. Unsurprisingly with me, it's the first two games that you see on the board with EG and going up against G2 and going up against Order. Anyone that is a North American fan that's somehow still awake out there will remember when we got flipped over by Pentanet in the last MSI. We can't have that again. We do not want to be starting that far behind in the group. Don't want to be starting that far behind. This will, in fact, be our featured matchup. And I want to ask you exactly what EG have to do differently because, Rez, there's a lot to unpack. I do want to fix, uh, focus, first of all, very quickly on the featured matchup of the day presented by Mercedes-Benz. It's RNG versus PSG. Now, RNG yesterday, they came into day one. They smashed, right? They were heavy favorites. But, Orgs, did they play as well or better than 
than you expected. Honestly, I think it was better. I mean, I expect them to come out strong in groups, but my big concern over the playoffs in particular for RNG has been Wei and Bin. They've been a little bit inconsistent, particularly if Wei isn't on his signature pick, but he got Viego and was just absolutely monstrous. And honestly, Bin as well, really a lot more respectful than we typically see him be, and he just completely flourished on this one. And generally, when you come into the first group for LPL teams, they tend to play to their opponent, play a lot more scrappier. So the fact that RNG was just on the ball and just looked insane. Specifically, I look towards Shahu's Ari, and he just felt confident on the pick. I know it's a current dominant pick right now for mid laners coming into the tournament, but he just made it look easy. I particularly appreciated in the draft, three bands targeted towards Holy Phoenix as well. Yeah. Like, really clear strategy, really clear uh, prep, research, and, and, and... Feels like a lot of respect. I don't want to... Like, the word respect is like... It was like they treated their opponent appropriately, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And it worked because Holy Phoenix and Jin didn't necessarily work out, and the team obviously struggled. Now, these two teams, of course, against PSG, they're no strangers. They played in last year's semifinals. It is that rematch where PSG made it to the top four. I do think, Raz, it is fair to say PSG not definitely at the same level as last year, and especially after yesterday's loss, they have a lot to bounce back from. Exactly. It's going to hurt when you lose top talent like River and uh, Maple. And the fact that we remember way back uh, last year uh, when PSG went up against RNG and they played spoiler to them in the Rumble stage. They ended up beating them. They went to the semifinals. Of course, eventually lost, right? All of those memories, I don't... If for, for them, it's going to be a, a tougher climb and RNG is going to look a lot stronger. But we've seen PSG start slow in the beginning of tournament, tournaments and ramp up when people less expect them. I expect that to happen, of course, here today. Yeah, I feel like, you know, there's some redemption here. I think RNG is a tough matchup to get it, but yep. I just hope to see a bit more promising play than, play than we got yesterday. It's a tough task as well. I took a look at some of the stats for RNG, and I'll break it down in the pre-match, but they have a 74.5% win rate across every international group stage they've ever appeared in. Oh, no. Think about that for a second. <laughs> Seven, that is a lot, okay? Anyways, let's bring it back to the first match of the day. NA versus EU, the Spice Wars Part 2 oh Revenge. God. Boogaloo! Get this off my screen. Um, Raz, Raz, baby, can you can you look at this graph? I don't want to hear it. Can you briefly summarize and remind me what the game looked like yesterday? Because I'm struggling. Let's get some analysis, Raz. I'm struggling to recall <laughs> for a bit. How, how was it, a little bit more seriously, how was it that G2 were able to pick up the win yesterday against G? I thought their draft was exceptional. We don't get to see a lot of teams really exploit the red side of the draft. Uh, uh, the Anivia pick into the rise is, is, is a tried and true. I know that the caster specifically mentioned Froggen because that was a pick that we kind of expect from that one. I mean, he played for EG historically as well, so the past has been, but oh, yes, yeah. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Uh, this play was incredibly smart. The casters mentioned it on the day because the full focus was Dragon. This is going to be the third Drake for G2. The full vision was played towards bot side. 50 seconds left. EG's thinking about it and right on the blast cone, on towards Baron buff, and snuck it underneath Evil Geniuses. And I think critically as well, this is the humble Brave Braves coming in, and the vision control you have with that. We saw a similar Baron from DFM, where there was just, it's impossible to contest vision. Yeah, it really is. We saw a lot of Umbral Glade yesterday, actually. I think it was one of the things that maybe we should keep an eye on throughout the course of today. We will have several post-game content. And what I really love from our production team and from our observers is highlighting that after G2 snuck that Baron, they then set up for the fight, and I got a tad nervous once this began. And as soon as G2 fell back into the choke point, EDG chased. Raz, I knew it was over. They won the team fight and they got the dragon. Yeah, Evil Genius has got more desperate and desperate, especially after Baron moving towards Dragon because they didn't want to lose it when Karthus was not alive because he tried to contest Baron on the last play. And so that's something that G2 already showed their greatest strength. They had a lead, they expanded on it, they didn't lose cool. Okay, I want to start with Orgs first as the less biased. Less invested member of today's I'll state format was that. This, okay? We've looked at what happened yesterday and why G2 won. I think it was a clever draft. I think it was clever play that unlocked the win. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see changing from EG to prevent that happening today? I think you need stronger mid-jungle. I think it comes down to picking champions that are able to facilitate and contest Captain Yankos. I mean, you had Ryze and Karthus, which is just not a strong duo. And honestly, Raz, I got to ask, do you know what a Nivea passive does? Because EG don't. <laughs> they don't. They got stomped by a Nivea, oh. and they never even saw the egg, right? 
<laughs> Look, let's just say G2 had a great strategy of making it so Rise was just never in the game. Yeah, <laughs> they never worked. had a chance of contesting the egg. It's actually hilarious just how dominant Caps was that he was able to have an 86% uh, kill participation on the Anivia. The roaming Anivia, Trevor. I do think it's very crucial to call out as well that the very first pick of that draft was in fact Pike. Yes. And I have to give huge kudos to Yinsu, who in her research for the event, frankly speaking, couldn't shut up about G2's Pike and how previous iterations of the rosters could play it in every role. And then she was so excited by it, I almost wanted to be like, it's not going to happen. And then it gets first picked. So I had to sit down first There we go. But Tiger Master's roaming, the way the team synergized was great. You have to assume that not only have G2 come in prepared, they have come in also respecting their opponents. They ensured that JoJo was shut down. Danny never got rolling. I think the meta shifted away from them a little bit. Mm -hmm. How much of an uphill task is it turning around yesterday's defeat to today's rematch? Because there hasn't been a lot of time, Rez. It's going to be tough. I think not only are you going to be addressing what the draft is, all teams are going to be exploring in the meta. And it feels like G2 is just generally speaking comfortable with all of the picks that they do have. And they're just a better macro team. So that's going to be the tough thing to take away from is that not only you're learning the macro points that G2 was able to show you in the last game, the drafts as well. Um, from the drafting point, I have confidence, Trevor, yes. okay, <laughs> that they will learn from that one. I also think with G2 being on the red side, it unlocked the interesting draft. So, I mean, Pike, Zeri, and Nivea, that is not something we've seen this year. Like, that, the, that, that's the first Nivea that Caps has played since 2017, Rift Rivals. Frankly, that's the first professional Nivea he's played. I don't think Rift Rivals truly count. Yeah, I think ultimately G2 a team who can throw out, throw out a lot of curveballs and yeah. being on red side allows you to be very reactionary, right? You see what your opponent offers and you're able to go, okay, we have this out of nowhere Nivea we can pull out that just completely shuts down your composition. Yeah. This is what I'm scared about. Because in the Yinsu uh, interview that Caps had, not only did he mention the fact that he was practicing the Anivia throughout the split, so it was something that they always had, but he talked about the fact that they had more in the tank, and knowing Broken I mean, Blade, he's going to have more. He brought this out in group stage. They, yes. They're not going to throw yeah. all their aces up their sleeve out in the group stage, young right? Man, there, there'll be young so much man, more. man, you do not know G2 and Carlos's orders. They will throw everything <laughs> out <laughs> as soon as it True, is this possible. This is the match. <laughs> okay, it is time to check in with what you guys at home think with your MasterCard fan predictions. Please make sure to follow us and let us know every single day who you think is going to win MasterCard Nexus at Twitter account because today's vote, very surprisingly to me, is 81% no! G2, 18% frankly Twitter, I cannot believe 18% of you voted for EG. I thought it was going to be much lower. That is what, what? the fans are saying. <laughs> we are two minutes away from draft. So, gentlemen, I'm going to ask you to give me a prediction. And more specifically, what will make your prediction come true in the following game? Who will win? And what will make it come true? Always gets to go first. Keep it short. G2 are going to win. It's going to be caps gap. And if they don't fix the mid-jungle issue, which I don't think they can, it's just over. During the playoffs, every time I voted against uh, Evil Geniuses, they ended up winning. I'm voting against them. Look, I'm putting as much caster uh, curse as possible on this one. I do think that G2 right now is just the better team, but we'll see if the underdogs of Evil Geniuses can take them. Now, very quickly, as we are about 40 seconds from heading to our Shoutcaster duo, can you tell me what effect EG is going to have to deal with knowing they also play order in the very next game? Because that is also a different mindset. G2 were able to 2-0 yesterday. EG now have to look to do that today. I think not only does it warm them up, it also gets them a better understanding of the mistakes they made in the previous game. I don't think they're a tilt-worthy team. In fact, the biggest surprise with the new members when they were on that big stage in the finals just lived with it, right? They, they reveled in the, in, in the moment. So I don't think that they're going to get tilted off of a bad performance. Yeah, I don't think tilting is definitely anything that team's going to do. I want to, I'm very interested to see how the draft adaptation will happen. And frankly, I just want to see and hear more from JoJo. I want to hear the... Yes. Spice. I want to see the drama, and that does it from us here at the State Farm Analysis. We're going to head to the Shoutcasters to get to the first match of day two of MSI 2022. Two, two, two.